Hello, my name's Claire Tyler from Claire Tyler Couture. Today I'd like to talk to you about pattern matching. I know a lot of people are nervous about working with patterns because of the fear of actually having to match, the, match them, uh, but hopefully today I can give you a few tips that will help with that. Uh, the first thing um, to think about is that you don't actually have to always pattern match. Sometimes you can't pattern match, particularly if your seams are going over a curve. So you just have to sort of try and do the best that you can with curved seams. Think about pattern placement. If you've got a large print with large circles or pieces of fruit, you don't want them to be in obvious places. So try and think about that when you're laying your pattern on your fabric. Uh, if you can't uh, map pattern match, at least try and make sure that the print is going around your body. So if you've got a line of uh, flowers or um, a geometric pattern, just make sure it's going around in the same place around your body, because that will also really help to, to, to improve the look of your garment. Before you can start to pattern match, you'll need to think about how much fabric you need to buy. And that's a question that's often asked. The general rule is that for every piece you want to match, you need to buy an extra pattern repeat. And the pattern repeat is basically where that pattern appears on your fabric. So this piece here, you can see that the, this flower is repeated again here. So if I measure that, this is quite a small pattern repeat, some are much larger than this. So from the top of the pattern, on this flower, the top of the pattern here is 21 centimetres. So for every piece that I want to match, I buy an extra 21 centimetres and that should mean that I've got enough to match all the pieces I need to. Before you can start to uh, sew any of your pattern, your pattern matching, you need to cut it out correctly, which will really help. And that's what I'm going to show you next. Before you start cutting out, I'd recommend tracing your pattern onto a paper that you can see through. This is a Swedish tracing paper. You can see the pattern nicely through it and it's also quite flexible. You can actually stitch your twirls with this paper, so it's a good one to have in stock. Uh, whichever garment you're going to be doing, because we're going to be cutting out on a single layer of fabric, it's quite a good idea to trace both sides of your pattern. So I've got the left-hand side and the right-hand side. This will make it a lot easier for cutting out. You'll also need to mark your seam allowances on your um, paper as well. First of all, decide which part of the pattern you want to go through your seam. So I've chosen the middle of this flower and butterfly. That's going to go right through the middle of the seam. So that's what I want to match. So I put my stitching line right on the part of the pattern that I want to match and pin this piece in place. With the second piece, we're going to fold back the seam allowance. So just fold it back along the line. You can press it if you want to, but I find that finger pressing is probably enough for that. And then just place the two stitching lines on top of each other. So they're matching at the top and the bottom. And then put a couple of holding pins in just to hold it in place. Once that's secured, I'll just put another one over here just to stop it moving too much. Once that's in place, so you can see the seam's going to go right through the middle of this um, pattern here, get yourself a pen or a pencil and trace as much of the pattern as you can. So I'm going to trace the wings of the butterfly here. So you can trace the shapes and you can write the colour on there as well if you want to. I'm also going to trace the edge of the square here. The more detail you trace at this point, the easier it will be. This is quite a simple pattern, but you can imagine that some patterns get quite complicated. I'm just going to do a couple here so you can get the idea. So this has got little squares in it. And this has got dots. And I'll trace the edge here. So like I say, the more detail you can put in, depending on what pattern you've got, the easier the next bit will be. But do things like, yeah, write the colours on there and write the shapes. Once you're happy with the amount that you've traced, you can unpin this piece. Unfold your seam allowance so your pattern's nice and flat again. And move your pattern piece over until you find the corresponding pattern. So I can see that this one's quite nice and simple. It's quite a small pattern repeat. But you may have to move it over quite a big area. 
once you've found the matching pattern, line up your drawing, making sure you're in the right place, and then pin this pattern piece down. Once you're happy with the positioning, you can cut both pieces out. Once you've cut out, I'm going to show you how to do the construction. So we're all cut out um, and ready to start construction. So we're going to remove the pattern pieces. On one of your pattern pieces, I'm going to press back the seam allowance here. So I've just taken my hot hammer and pressed this back. And on my seam allowance on this piece is one and a half centimetres. So I've just pressed this back all the way along. Now there are a couple of ways you can do the pattern matching. Um, I'm going to show you both of them. The first one is to use this double-sided basting tape. So I'm going to cut a piece of tape, that is the length of my seam. Here, I'm not going to use my dressmaking scissors, I'll use some paper scissors for that. I'm going to get glue on my, my fabric scissors. Place the tape on the seam allowance as close as you can to the fold. Okay, so that's all stuck down. Then you're going to peel off the backing tape. This can be the trickiest bit, the whole thing. There we go. Peel off your tape. Now I'm going to stick, turn this around so I can see what I'm doing here. And then what you're going to do is place the folded edge on top of your other side so that you're matching the pattern exactly. So work your way down, making sure that you're completely happy with the match. Go. That looks pretty good. Once you're happy with it and it looks really nice and neat, you open that. I'll just turn it round so you can see. You open up the fabric, and you'll be able to stitch along the fold here. I would put a few pins in just to hold it nice and straight, as just as an extra, um, stop it slipping as you're sewing. Uh, once you've stitched that, you can neaten your edges and that's your pattern matching done. So with this method, it's a very nice and quick, quick and easy method, but it does mean that your seam allowances are stuck together. Um, so it's fine with a nice fine cotton, but if you've got a thicker fabric where you might want to be pressing your seams open, I've got another way that I can show you. So that's the next thing to do. So for this method, uh, again, you're going to fold back your seam allowances. Um, on both sides. I'd recommend actually that you neaten these two edges because we're going to be pressing them open afterwards. So I folded back my seam allowance on this side and I'm going to take it across and match the pattern. I'm going to pin it in place this time. Right, close to the fold as I can. This one takes a bit longer to do, but I, I, I like this way of doing it. I'm a bit of a hand sewing girl, I have to say, so I like um, a bit of hand sewing. Get a bit more in control of everything. So that's all pinned in place with the pattern matched. And I now need to tack this in place, but it needs to be quite a specific tacking to really help us stitch the seam. So I've got a needle threaded up. I've done a nice bright red, so do a nice bright colour. So I've done a nice bright red here. And I'm going to do what's called a fell stitch. And this is the stitch, I love doing this stitch. It's a really nice stitch. I use this for a lot of couture hand sewing, sewing linings down, particularly down the side of zips and things. I'm going to start off with a double stitch or a knot at one end. 
I tend to do a double stitch. And I'm doing this. When I say a double stitch, I often do three. Okay, so I've done a stitch, double stitch right on the fold there. Okay, so I'm going to come up on the fold and then go straight down through the bottom layer and then come along probably the closer together you do them the more accurate you'll be so I'll probably do about half a centimeter a quarter of an inch along come up right on the fold and then you're going to go straight down through all layers go along underneath and come up on the fold so they've got to be quite tiny stitches so I hope you can see them because they are quite tiny basically what you're doing is holding the fold down and I like this way because you can actually manipulate the fabric so if you're as you're going along taking your pins out if the pattern match is not exactly where you want it to be you can just manipulate it with your fingers to get it exactly right so I can see what I'm going to be really picky now and <laughs> try and match the pattern really accurately so you're just going straight down and then along about half a centimetre and coming up on the edge of the fold and manipulate the pattern to get a really good match as you're going down. So it's worth taking a bit of time with this and getting it as accurate as possible. I just need to get these lines matched. I'll just do a little bit more and I'll show you what it looks like from the other side. really stitching this fold down nice bit of mindful hand sewing it's always good okay so I've done the top bit there you can see that's nice and um, matched there so what you would do is then open up the seam and I don't know if you can see there's lots of little red dots there but basically you're going to be like we did in the first one stitching in that fold once you've stitched that you can take the tacky stitches out and it'll be perfectly matched something else you might find useful when you're pattern matching particularly with stripes or plaids would be fork pins look at that down there you can see that. that's a fork pin I think uh, quilters use these quite a lot, but they can be very good when you're joining um, uh, stripes. So you can put the pin through and it's just holding the fabric a bit firmer in two places. Just make sure it matches on the other side. You can also lift back and make sure that everything's matching. And then when you come to stitch your seam, I still wouldn't stitch over these. I don't like to stitch over pins. I don't think sewing machines like it very much. So you'll stitch your seam and just as you get to it, you can just pull out your pin and come along to the next one. So fork pins are also very helpful for pattern matching. And they're also very good when you're matching seams across the back of a, a dress as well. So that's my top tips for pattern matching. Do give it a go, even if you're just doing a sample. It really helps to learn, practice those techniques. If you like this video, do like, share, subscribe to my channel so you can see what else we've got coming up. Uh, all the products we've used today will be listed down below uh, so you can find those on my website. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.